In this example, we're told that Earth was uh, assumed to be molten uh, in, in, early in its formation, so completely molten Earth uh, long, long ago. And we're told that the acceleration due to gravity within this fluid sphere, so this is all kind of molten rock and such, uh, the acceleration due to gravity varies linearly with distance r from the Earth's center. That you can actually derive from physics. You probably did that in one of your physics courses. We're told that the acceleration due to gravity at the surface, at 6440 kilometers, uh, is our standard 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, the density of this molten material is uniformly, we're told to assume it's uniformly 5600 kilograms per cubic meter. That's probably uh, that, that's a, that's a, actually a pretty big assumption. Uh, normally you'd expect the most dense material like lead and such to be closer to the center of the earth and uh, less dense material closer to the crust. But we're going to take things, we're going to make things simple and just assume it's uniform. And we're going to assume that the, uh, the material is also incompressible, which is also an assumption. It's not as bad as the first assumption, um, but you know, it, the, the density of that material uh, likely will change because of the enormous pressures that the material is subject to, but it won't change a whole lot. It's probably a bigger assumption that it's uniform. The incompressible assumption is not, not such a bad one. Anyway, we're asked to determine what is the gauge pressure at the center of this fluid Earth. So right there at the center, what's that gauge pressure? So the first thing we want to do is just figure out how gravity varies with radius. We're told that it varies linearly, so I'll just say it's a constant times the radius. So if I sketch that out, it looks like this. Here's radius, here's gravity. It's going to be zero at the center. It varies linearly, so that means it's a straight line. It's supposed to be a straight line. And we know that when R, capital R, is equal to 6440 kilometers, gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So to find the constant C, which is just the slope here, we'll just base it on that boundary condition. G at radius capital R over capital R. So it's 9.81 meters per second squared divided by 6440 times 10 to the 3 meters. I just converted from kilometers to meters. And when you plug in those numbers, the C comes out to be 1.523 times 10 to the minus 6th, 1 over second squared. So that's how gravity varies with the radius. Okay, so now we're trying to find the pressure at the center of the Earth. So I'm going to use the hydrostatic pressure relation. It looks like this. The PDR is equal to minus rho g. Okay, and uh, the idea here being that um, I, I don't want to use, you know, let me write this down. Normally we would say like the gauge pressure is just rho times g times the depth. Let me call it y or here it would be R. It would be capital R minus little r. So normally we would do this for the hydrostatic relation. So this is our depth here. And uh, normally we'd do this for an incompressible substance, but you gotta remember when we derived this, we had assumed that G is a constant. If you go back and look at the notes, that's an assumption that we made when we derived the hydrostatic pressure relation. But here, in this example, g is not a constant. It varies with radius. So we can't use this expression. Okay, so we need to take into account the variation in gravity. Even though the density is a constant, gravity is not. So that's why I'm going back a step and just using the pressure gradient. So if you go back and look at the derivation in the notes for how we got the hydrostatic pressure relation, you'll see an expression that looks something like this. And notice I have a minus sign here, and that's, that's because um, radius is pointing in the opposite direction of gravity. So here's the surface of the Earth. I'll draw a little curve there, and there's gravity pointing downward. So they're in opposite directions, so that's why we have a minus sign here. So I can substitute in for gravity, since it's a function of radius, so it's that constant times the radius. Now I have this first order differential equation. We can go ahead and solve this. So we'll have dp to minus rho times c times r dr. I'll integrate both sides. We'll go r goes from, uh, little r goes from 0 to capital R, or actually, um, yeah, we'll go to capital R. And then the pressure goes from, I'll call it p naught, that's the pressure at the center of the earth, 
to the pressure at the free surface. Okay, so this, this pressure here is the pressure at capital R, which would be the pressure on the free surface if this is our, our radius capital R there. Sorry, it's not a straight line. So this is the Earth. That's supposed to be a circle. It's not very good, but it's the it's this would be P at capital R here. Which we're told we're doing gauge pressure, so we're gonna make it zero because it's a gauge pressure. Alright, so then we'll get, um, we'll integrate both sides. We'll get 0 minus P naught is equal to minus rho C. Both of those are constants times 1 half capital R squared. So P naught will be rho 1 half rho C capital R squared. So that's the gauge pressure at the center of the Earth. So let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. We were told the density was 5600 kilograms per cubic meter. That's the density of, you know, like the, the various kinds of rock and, you know, so like silica and, and uh, lead and everything in between, those kinds of things. C, we worked out before, that's the 1.523 times 10 to the minus 6, 1 over second squared. And then R was the 6440 times 10 to the third meters. And when you plug those numbers in, you get that our gauge pressure at the center of the Earth is... 1.769 times 10 to the 11th pascals. It's an enormous number. Or let's just put it in terms of atmospheres. It's uh, 1.769 times 10 to the 6th atmospheres. It's a huge number. It's an it's it's a, you know almost 2 million atmospheres at the center of this liquid Earth up here. So. Just an, an enormous pressure. You can imagine that it would certainly be very hot here because of, of the enormous pressures acting on it. And um, so anyway, it's kind of an interesting example to think about, uh, you know, this, this, what kind of pressures the early Earth, you know. So, so one might actually use this kind of information, for example, to uh, figure out what's happening to the rocks and such uh, as the Earth formed, what kind, you know, why you might get um, different kinds of um, rock formations and things like that because of the a large amount of pressure that it's exerted on. It, you know, people have talked about uh, how, you know, carbon is turned into diamond because of the enormous temperatures and pressures and toward the center of the earth. And you can sort of believe that because of the, the big numbers that we were calculating down here. Anyway, well, I'll go ahead and end the example there. But this is a nice application of the hydrostatic pressure relation but keeping in mind here that the gravity is no longer constant, so you have to actually integrate to find how the pressure varies with um, depth from the free surface. Okay, we'll end it there.